Hello, welcome to this short series of videos on how to write a solver for the Minesweeper game using C Sharp. For those of you who haven't played Minesweeper before, it's played on a two dimensional grid and each cell can optionally contain a number which says how many other cells around it contain mines. So in this example, this, num this cell here has a four, so four of its neighbours either horizontally, vertically or diagonally can contain mines. This one here wouldn't have any neighbours containing any mines. And so using that, you can then go off and work out where all the mines are. For example, you know there's no mines in any of these cells, so you can put an X for no mines. But one of the neighbour of this cell must have a mine, so there must be a mine in there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new Visual Studio project. And we're going to use WinForms and with .NET Core, which is one of our sets up there. I normally put all my code in a in my code folder, and I'm just going to mine sweeper, and we're just going to have all the code in a single project to start with. So this take a couple of seconds. So one of the things I'm keen to do is not just solve the board, but actually show you the steps it goes through in order to solve it. And maybe hope, maybe with a description of each one saying how did, why it decided a mine was or wasn't in a particular cell. So because we're using .NET Core, we don't get the graphical designer. So we're going to have to code most of the form by hand, which is fine. So for example, if we want to set a title, we can just do that in code. And we could, for example, set an initial size for the window. Um, let's start with 1000 by 1000. And we'll just run that just to make sure everything's OK. OK, that's not too bad. I think it's going to be quite annoying because it's going to keep opening on the wrong window. But So what we want to do first of all is actually draw the grid. So, so we want to do the visual side first before we try to write the solver so we can just um, see what's going on. So what we're going to do is draw a grid on the screen there. Each cell will be a fixed size, so the bigger the board, the more space we're going to need, but that's okay. And we won't worry about resizing it when we resize the window and so on for the moment. So to begin with, we're just going to draw a grid sort of there. So to keep the code separated, we'll create a new class that's going to do the actual drawing. So we could call that a game drawer. And for the moment, this is just going to have a single method that's not going to return anything, which can just be draw. And it will take in our graphics object, which we're going to draw to. OK, that's, and then back to our form again. When we first create the form, we'll also create one of these drawing objects. And we'll create that as an instance variable. And so the nice thing about passing the graphics object is we can choose when we're actually going to invoke it. So it could be on a button press, it could be when the paint event's needed, when the screen's redrawn, and so on. So for now, we're going to do it whenever the paint event is fired. So that gives us a graphics object straight away. So all we need to do in this case is draw to it. So the first thing we need to do is draw the outline of the grid. So let's do that. Let's just go our graphics object G. 
so because we're going to have a border to the top and left of the grid we don't want to keep adding that border every time we do any calculations so what we can do is just start off by doing a transform just to move the origin to be 100 comma 100 so 0 comma 0 now takes our border into account so if we now draw a rectangle and we'll do it in black so we can now start 0 0 so the size is going to be the number of columns times the width of a column so let's create a, a constant for that call it cell size 50 seems reasonable and for the moment we'll hard code the number of columns So on our example board here, it's an 8 by 8 but while we're doing our initial drawing, we'll make the numbers different just to make sure we haven't switched rows and columns around any place because we want to use different values for the two. So now the total width we now know is going to be the number of, co number of columns times the cell size and the total height will be the number of rows times the cell size. So now we need to draw the vertical and horizontal lines. So we do the vertical lines first. So that would be column. And if we think about it, we're going to have one less line. Yeah, one less line than we have cells. So if we start one and then we draw at the end of a at the start of a cell so that, this will be draw a line so we do it in black again so always drawing start yeah so it'd be column times cell size y will be zero x is going to come straight down so that doesn't change and the bottom will be number of rows times cell size and then we'll do something similar in the other direction for the horizontal lines but now we're going to have row instead of column and so we're going to start on the left hand side at zero go to row comma cell size and then over to okay let's see what that does Okay, so what have we done? Okay, so we, so this is why we should use different values when we're testing because we just spotted the bug here in that that should have been a number of rows. Okay, that's much better. Right, now we need to be able to draw in the cells. So a cell can either contain a number it can either be empty it can contain a mine it can contain a miss or it can contain a number between 0 and 8 so always single characters so for the moment we can represent mines as being maybe an exclamation mark or a circle uh, misses as X's and numbers just as numbers so just to test things out with quite a function we just hard code some values so we do draw symbol so we're going to draw to the graphics object we need to know the symbol we're going to draw so let's do a miss 
the cell we're going to do it in. So one comma two. That's probably all we need. Have a couple more examples. So we draw a mine and we draw a number. Put them in different places. So we always want column or X first and then row. And to draw text is quite easy, you just do draw string, we should be our symbol, font, so we need to create a font. Finish that off in a second. Uh, brush the color. Just stick with black for a second. And its location. So to start with, it will be column times cell size and row times cell size. Okay, so I'm never sure the correct way to create a font so I'm just going to steal some code from one of my other projects which won't take a second when the, in fact, we can just do it here. Okay, so when we construct this object, we're going to create a font. Let's call that symbol font. Okay, I want to make sure that's working. So it, it's not going to be completely correct because we're just going to draw it in the side of the which the moment we really want to draw the symbols in the middle so we need to measure how wide each symbol is and then adjust it accordingly one across two down yeah that's right so first thing we need to do is symbol size equals g dot measure string this is fairly straightforward. We give it the same text, same font, I think there's an overload origin, yes. So where are we going to put it? Finally, the string format, which is ours, is straightforward. So we just do default. So that will give us the size of the text we've just written. So now we just need to adjust our x and y to take this size into account. So it's going to be the x position plus the cell width, cell size, take away the symbol size divided by. And we may as well do the same thing for the height. Okay, that's looking much better. So we've now got the ability to draw a board and render symbols into the board. What should we do next? I think we now need the 
board itself. So instead of using hard coded values, we can actually read them off the proper board object. So we want to keep the logic different from the drawing. So we're going to create a new class, which we will just call board. No, game, I think. And when we construct our uh, window, we'll also create a new game. And we'll inject that into the game drawer. So instead of using these hard coded values, what we can do is we can iterate over all the all the cells and we'll ask the game object what symbol is in that cell. So we just need a couple of loops for that. Memory to adjust it to start from zero. So instead of using this hard-coded value, we now need to inquire from the game object what the value is. And we still want to draw it in the same place. Okay, so we just need to implement that. Um, let's just return the column as a number for the moment. Or maybe the column, the row plus the column. Okay. So Okay, yeah, so that's working nicely, that's rendering everything. So in the next video, we'll look at actually working on the interface for the game object and actually loading the initial state of the game. Thank you for watching.